Hey guys, I'm back and hopefully this won't be a one-time video. Um, I wanted to give an explanation as to where I've been the past couple of years. I was involved in a live stream uh, for Country Prepper and he mentioned resubscribing and checking out what content I had. So I felt like it may be time to come back. And with things balancing out with YouTube a little bit more, um, it may work out that way. I did want to give some kind of explanation to the limited number of subscribers I had as to where I've been. Um, when I originally made this, this was a hobby to me. And it was similar to other channels to monitor their progress with their prepping and to be accountable every day and um, continuously build for themselves. Um, this quit being fun for me. And there was one incident in particular where I felt that there was an extreme bullying technique used by a large channel when I was involved in a podcast and did not ask me a question, did not give me a chance to answer, and then proceeded to berate me because he could not grasp the concept of it. I'm not going to call this channel out by name. I, in fact, I believe I deleted all links to the podcasts I was involved in. Um, this had to do with my wife's immigration. My wife is not from America. She's from Canada. We have been married at this point for about five years. She has been here for almost a year. So that means we were married for about four years before she ever started living here in America. The reason we did this was partially because of the way that immigration has been looked upon in America. And we fell in love right away. It was very quick. And we wanted to get married because we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. We did not want the government to look at how quick we got married as her just jumping into this marriage to get a green card. She was very happy and very well set up in Canada and did not need me for some financial support. In fact, the only reason she did marry me at the time was because she loved me with all of her heart. When I was asked about why I did not, I, I had mentioned in one of the podcasts that I did not live with my wife, this person jumped on me and never gave me a chance to answer, and I just, I got fed up with his bullying techniques, which he is often known to do, and snapped and then left the the chat. I explained, I gave my apologies to the host of the podcast and tried to explain the situation. I don't know if he remembers or not. But I, I do feel sorry for losing my cool. I, but here's the thing. I will not stand for, bull, for bullying. I have always been taught to stand up for myself, and that's what I felt I was doing, even if I didn't go about it in the best way possible. The next reason why I kind of pulled away from YouTube was I left my job. I was not being treated fairly. I worked for a cab company. They were having me use subpar vehicles to transport people around and it was affecting my bottom line and I told them about it repeatedly and they did nothing about it. Uh, basically I was driving around in a car with no air conditioning when it was 90 plus degrees out. I could deal with almost any situation, I will adapt, but to my customers this was very unfair. I raised this point with the owners and the mechanic and they never saw fit to deal with it until I quit. A week after I quit, they fixed the car. In fact, they went through and fixed all the cars at that point and made sure every single one of them had air conditioning that worked very well. In my opinion, this was too little too late. I was risking my lives to work my life to work for this company and what I was bringing home was affected very greatly by this and in fact we lost a lot of loyal customers because of this specific issue. After that, not too long after that, my wife came down here and we started, um, 
I started snow plowing like I normally do in the winter, uh, which did help supplement our income. And she very quickly found a very nice job, and I was helping her get to and from the work from her work. Uh, about a, it was earlier this year, um, we decided to move. I was in a small two-bedroom apartment, and the landlords refused to fix anything, even with multiple complaints, even with complaining to the city. Uh, there, we felt stuck. There was nothing that they were going to do for us, and the city could not get involved for whatever reasons they wanted to give. We decided to move, and for me, this move was a godsend. Um, basically, and I'm going to get somewhat detailed about where I live, which I'm not going to tell you exactly where I live now, but... At the time, I was in the south side of Cook County, Chicago, uh, Cook County, Illinois, outside of Chicago. Some of the worst gun laws you could possibly deal with. They treated the whole county like it was the city of Chicago. Uh, I could use the word discrimination, but based on the laws and regulations of the city of Chicago, I would often get lumped in, be blocked from purchasing magazines, be blocked from purchasing guns, and my ability to go shooting at a gun range was often very limited. The gun ranges around where I lived, there were a few nice ones, but I was often driving 45 minutes away and closer to where I live now just to find a good gun range. One gun range in particular did not even have follow the laws required by Illinois, not just by Cook County, but you are supposed to ID anybody coming to shoot, you are supposed to validate, uh, make sure they have a valid FOIA card, and inspect their weapons. There's quite a few steps. Uh, I went to the specific gun range, and when they didn't even ask to see my FOIA card, I, it raised a red flag with me, and I decided to quit shooting in the area. So we moved, we moved an hour and a half pretty much northwest of where we were, and now we are in northern Illinois, so way, very far away from city of Chicago. We're over 70 miles away now. The gun laws in this county are much nicer, I will say, and there are no cities around us that require any ridiculous regulations such as magazine limits, such as weapons bans, etc., etc. In this time, I have continued my prepping adventures. I'm not going to go into details now because that would be uh, vital things that I can make videos about later, but I have continued to prep in what little budget I had since I left that job and since snowplow season ended for me. Um, there are some new guns in my collection, there are several new knives, there are just in general, several new items that I've brought in, and I have continued to use what I had already to expand my prepping knowledge. Um, one of the uh, last things I'm going to touch on as to why I left YouTube was the adpocalypse, the censorship, and the bans. When um, and you noticed that a lot of my videos went away, especially if they had to do with firearms. They were not making it clear as to what would get you banned and what would get you in trouble or what would get you a red flag or whatever they want to call it, uh, the citations or when you would do something wrong. And at a point in time, there, even people like Hickok45 and other channels were getting, um, I'm going to call them citations or notifications that they had uh, violated the terms of service. This seemed to have been going across all social media. There was a, um, for lack of better words, a gun scare. Everybody was scared of gun owners. And obviously this censorship was not right, but it was allowed to proceed. Because like in most cases, if you are an advocate of the Second Amendment, you are evil, obviously. Um... This happened right about when I was planning on returning, and at that point with my channel B 
being very gun oriented, I, I listed off in my opening, it's guns, knives, propping, etc. That this would have eliminated a lot of my videos. At this point in time, I'm trying to recover what videos I can, and we will see what the future brings us. Remember to always be prepared and be safe.